Hi, welcome to today's episode of Fascinating Tales. Today, I want to tell you the unbelievable story of a man who, but for a single incident, would have been in the shoes of Bill Gates. His name was Gary Kildall, the forgotten architect of personal computing. His tale is one of groundbreaking innovation, missed opportunities, and the cutthroat nature of Silicon Valley that shaped our digital world. In the early 1970s, the computing landscape was a fragmented mess. Each machine spoke its own language, forcing programmers to rewrite software for every new computer model. It was more like each phone in a particular module of Apple or Motorola having its unique charger. You can imagine each car requiring its unique type of gas to operate, or every human being requiring a different kind of oxygen to live. Gary Kildall was the only man who could solve this problem. Even though he was a laid-back computer science professor, he had the passion for flying and an uncanny ability to see the future of technology. While moonlighting for Intel, Kildall created PLM, a high-level programming language for microprocessors. This breakthrough led him to develop CPM, Control Program for Microcomputers, in 1974, the world's first operating system for microcomputers. According to tech historian Samantha Chun, CPM was like inventing a universal power outlet for computers. Before Kildall, it was as if every appliance needed its own unique socket. He standardized the way software could talk to hardware. Encouraged by his wife Dorothy, Kildall founded Digital Research Incorporated to market CPM. By 1979, their garage startup had become the de facto standard in the industry. CPM ran on over 3,000 different computer models, and digital research was pulling in millions. Despite every indication pointing at Gary becoming the Bill Gates we see today, the most surprising event in tech occurred. First, Kildall was more interested in elegant code than aggressive business tactics. That mindset, according to some historians, cost him dearly. But what really happened to Gary Kildall? In August 1980, IBM was secretly developing its first personal computer. They needed an operating system and approached Microsoft's young co-founder, Bill Gates. Gates didn't have an OS but knew who did. He directed IBM to Gary Kildall. On the day IBM arrived at Digital Research, Kildall was out flying his plane. His wife Dorothy met the IBM team but was put off by their strict non-disclosure agreement. The meeting ended without a deal. According to Forbes, the Kildall story is the stuff of legend, and yet it is not about luck. Kildall did not just happen to miss the IBM meeting. He knew IBM was coming to call that day and, in fact, eventually did meet with Big Blue. But Kildall decided against selling his operating system. He did not believe the IBM PC would cause a paradigm shift and then a revolution. Furthermore, his wife, Dorothy McEwen, gave IBM's proposed contract to their lawyer, who found it dangerously restrictive. In exchange for $200,000 cash, IBM wanted exclusive title to Kildall's operating system. Kildall was convinced that his company's intellectual property was worth millions. In the end, he made a calculated business decision, a decision that, granted, turned out to be a monumental mistake. When IBM returned to Microsoft, Gates saw his chance. Instead of redirecting them back to Kildall, he acquired QDOS, Quick and Dirty Operating System, a CPM clone for just $75,000. Microsoft polished it into MS-DOS and licensed it to IBM. Gates' genius, however, wasn't just getting the deal. Microsoft kept the rights to sell MS-DOS to other companies such as HP and Compaq. These companies primarily were competitors of IBM. As IBM PCs and their clones flooded the market, all running MS-DOS, Microsoft's fortune soared. By 1985, Windows 1.0 was launched, setting the stage for Microsoft's dominance. Meanwhile, CPM's market share dwindled. IBM did offer it later on alongside MS-DOS, but at $240 compared to MS-DOS's $40, the choice for consumers was clear. But the fact is, MS-DOS had already gained momentum, and developers flocked to it, creating a rich ecosystem that CPM couldn't match. Kildall continued innovating, 
pioneering concepts like the graphical user interface with GEM and early CD-ROM technology. He co-hosted the TV show Computer Chronicles, showcasing the latest in personal computing. Gary, we're going to be talking about things like transportables and lap portables, but I want to show you this portable over here. This looks like a pretty small computer, but in fact, this is just the keyboard. I can program my things into my computer, and in fact, this is the computer, and of course, it is now a wrist portable. Mm. Now, I don't know whether this does anything very useful or not. In fact, that's my question about this whole subject of portables. Is this another case of technology in search of a purpose? I don't think so, Stuart. Uh, it's just a new dimension in technology. We have had faster processors, more memory, and so forth in the past. Now what we're looking for is trying to get all that speed and power into a smaller pack. But his unfortunate divorce, coupled with the loss of the IBM deal, haunted him. By the early 90s, Kildall had largely withdrawn from the tech world slipping into painful depression and alcoholism. On July 11, 1994, Kildall died after an incident at a Monterey bar, leaving behind a complicated legacy. Gary's story is a what-if that haunts computing history. His innovations laid the groundwork for modern operating systems, even if his name isn't as recognized as Gates or Jobs. Today, in 2025, the tech world has evolved dramatically. Yet, Kildall's influence persists. Look at how Apple transitioned to ARM chips or Microsoft's push into quantum computing, notes Dr. Chun. The idea of creating universal platforms that can run diverse software? That's pure Kildall. Recent years have seen renewed interest in Kildall's contributions. In 2022, the Computer History Museum launched a permanent exhibit on CPM's impact. A 2024 documentary, the Ghost in the Machine explored Kildall's life and legacy. Tech giants like Apple and Microsoft have quietly acknowledged Kildall's influence, with Timothy Cook calling him a visionary whose work made our industry possible in a 2023 interview. Well, I do know this is a sad story, but it offers us crucial lessons for any form of life. And I think the fundamental lesson here is that innovation alone isn't enough. Timing and contracts are equally important. In today's era of AI and quantum computing, we're seeing signs of the PC revolution. The next Gary Kildall might be working on AGI or brain-computer interfaces right now. The question is, will that Kildall become the Gates? Thank you for watching. It's quite an unfortunate story, but I thought to share since many people don't know about Gary Kildall. This has been Edward Barish, and you've been watching Fascinating Tales. Feel free to subscribe if you just came across this channel. I'll see you again soon in the next episode. Cheers and do have a good one.